Okay, so we're going. She's oh, she's dragging us around like like before. Do you remember the name of the street we're on? Um, let's try and remember. It's something Kuro, Ikebukuro, uh, Sunshine Streety. Uh, yeah, I think it was Sunshine. Yeah, we're right. It's Sunshine Street. Yes, the Sunshine Sixty Duri, or as Google Translate says, the Sunshine Sixty Duri, like this. Wait, that's not right. What the fuck are you talking about? This is how you're supposed to say it, Google Translate. Sunshine六十通りを. I'm gonna make her say sunshine over and over again. Okay, so she sings a little song for some reason. Um, all I did was tell her to say sunshine four times, and she pronounced it two different ways. Whatever. Uh, this is the Sunshine 60, the Crown Jewel skyscraper of Ikekuburo, Ikebukuro. Uh, wow, it really is tall. It's called the Sunshine 60 because it's 60 floors. Holy fucking shit. It's like a giant... Like, that's really Japanese. Like, it's so efficient. Like, the use of space just looks like so efficient. Like, it's not like uh, the Gherkin building or the Shard in London. The Shard has a lot of wasted space. Or uh, something like the Burj Dubai, which obviously is just to be tall. This is only reason for existing. Like, the Burj Dubai could look like this, and it would be way more efficient, is what I'm trying to say. Way more cost-effective and stuff, but it wouldn't be as impressive. Bingo, that's absolutely right. The Sunshine 60 was built in 1978. At the time it was built, it was the tallest building in East Asia. I want to say it. It was probably the tallest building in East Asia, because obviously the Hiroshima bombings... Uh, we're only a couple of years before this, like I think like 20 years before 1978, I think it was 1969, but like, don't quote me, uh, I should really look up when the Hiroshima bombings was, uh, yeah, 1980, um, wow, that's like, uh, after when I thought, wait, uh, no, I'm talking rubbish, it was on August 6, 1945, near the end of World War II, the United States Army Air Force, uh, the USAAF, dropped an atomic bomb at 8.15 on August 6, 1945. So they dropped the atomic bomb way before I thought. I thought they dropped the atomic bomb somewhere in the 60s. Uh, I was thinking like 69, maybe like 61. So yeah, like after that there probably wasn't a lot of like, high buildings. In Hiroshima. Hiroshima is obviously like a pretty big part of Japan, like it's, it's a pretty big section. Um, it's in the Chokuguki region or something? Chugoku region? Let's get, uh, let's get Google Translate to translate this shit. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Chugoku uh, Yeah, Chugoku Which I think means Chugoku Prefecture. Uh, unfortunately, it's further down the list nowadays. But it's still quite tall. You know, that, like, when you think about it, probably a lot of companies didn't want to, like, uh, didn't have the money even to, like, invest into big structures after World War Two, And obviously World War One, where Japan was involved as well. But to a less extent, and uh, yeah, maybe this was like a big deal to like make this building. By the way, the background music may be quite loud in this episode. That's something that's boring me right now. It's because it's quite loud. I know. Hey, as long as we're here, do you want to go inside? Inside? Are you sure? Um, am I sure of what? Well, it's isn't it an office building? Wait, what? I don't worry about it. There's public spaces inside too, plus on the top floor. Oh my, is that us? Is that what we look like? <laughs> we look like a total douche. Aki-chan's shorts though. Dude, those shorts. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, 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 <laughs> um, yeah. 
I can't believe there's an aquarium in the- What? Are you fucking kidding me? There's an aquarium in that tower? A planetarium, a theater, a museum, even a shopping center, and a theme park? Wait, is this aquarium inside that fucking building? Because I just said it was an efficient use of space, and it's got a fucking aquarium in it. Uh, That fish has a funny face. Matoko looks a bit like a fish with a funny face. Uh, sure it does. It looks a bit like you. Hey, my face doesn't look like that. Yeah, you don't even have eyeballs, dude. Uh, hey, look over there. You can see an ocean sunfish. You really can. It's a long time since I've seen... I've been to the aquarium, but it's nice to meet... To come here every so often. Of course it is, Aki-chan. Yeah, it is. I can't believe we're looking at fish this high in the air in the middle of the city. So it is inside the big sunshine building. Holy fuck from the outside it just looks like this grey building and inside it's like an aquarium that is weird the fish are like above sea level that might actually make the fish feel weird if it's like 60 floors up that could be like what like nearly 600 feet it has to be more than 600 feet tall that building how big is the sunshine 60 building I'm gonna look up how big the Sunshine 60 building is. Wow, that picture in the game doesn't do it justice. It's 786 feet tall. I thought it was gonna be 600 feet, just 10 feet of floor. But it's a uh, 60 above ground floors and five below ground floors. Um, that is fucking incredible. Yeah, until 1985, it was the tallest building in Asia. And then it was overtaken by 63 building. Oh my god, 63 building is literally like 100 feet higher. Because it only has like a couple more floors. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's an Ikuhuburo. I'm going to link to Sunshine 60. We could all learn. I'm going to link a lot of stuff in the description in these episodes. You know what people say? They feel sorry for the fish in aquariums and animals at zoo crammed into little spaces. They say it's wrong and that they should have more space to move around in, but sometimes I wonder if that's really true. What's she talking about? When you think about it, from the point of view of a fish or an animal, what do they care about the size of the world outside? Living in the wider world means you were caught up in the cruel cycle of life. You might get eaten up before you grow to full size. You live in constant fear of death out there. Akishan's getting disturbing. Sometimes I think it might be nicer for them to live in these tanks, where they don't have to worry about natural predators or finding food on their own. Maybe that's just another form of happiness. Akichan's deep. She's real deep. It's uh, she's deep like an aquarium, I guess. Uh, it, and it's not as if the animals in the zoos and aquariums know what they're missing, right? If they don't know about it, the world they're in right now is the entirety of their world, don't you think? Do you know the Japanese phrase "the frog in the well knows not the ocean"? Dude, this is some Confucius. This is some, like, really deep Confucius stuff right here. No, I don't know that proverb. It was originally a Chinese phrase. It means that when you live in a small world, you know nothing of what it means to live in a larger one. But if a frog has lived in a well its whole life, what does he need to know about the world outside? That's what I think. Wow. What am I doing? I'm just babbling on about stuff again. Sorry, don't mind me. Seriously, let's go further in. It looks like there's sea otters and penguins up there. Sure. Let's, let's go on that revelation. I think we're going to end it here as well. And uh, we'll pick up on the next episode of The Press of Plays. Go, go, Nippon. Panty, panty, fong, fong, adventure.